Chapter 596, Kindness. They spent the night in the cave. Early in the morning on the next day, Yuxiakau checked on the two most severely injured hunters. The one who was most injured had gotten his left arm neatly bitten off from the elbow down. If they didn't use Xiakau's wound balm and medication to stop bleeding, she was pretty sure that this guy would have died at this point. The other hunter had a nasty looking gouge in his shoulder which was missing a large piece of flesh. It was quite bloody and frightening looking. This time, 26 hunters from the nameless village had gone into the mountains. They had appointed the experienced hunter, Jin Tan Kui, as their leader. The vast majority of the hunters were father and son or had very good relationships with each other. Because of that, when the white tiger appeared before them, none of the group tried to leave the hunter who had gotten his arm bitten off behind to feed the tiger. The hunters had already been out for about a dozen days now. At first, their trip had gone rather smoothly and they didn't encounter any fierce beasts. However, staying on the outskirts of the mountains meant that they weren't able to hunt many creatures that were worth a lot of money. For the sake of having more spending money in town during the winter, they had all participated in a vote, which was unanimous for going deeper into the forest. In the previous few days, all of them felt gratified at their choices as they had encountered a lot more animals with valuable pelts. In fact, one sable fur pelt could be sold for a few dozen dollars even to a middleman. If a person's luck was even better and he encountered the servant of a rich man out buying furs, then they could make double of what they could sell it for to the middleman. Now, every family had a few valuable fur pelts on hand to sell. After tasting the sweetness of success, the hunters wanted to push their luck and gradually headed deeper into the mountains. Jin Tan Kui relied heavily on his over 20 years of experience and sensitive senses to guide the group of hunters around several territories that were claimed by fierce beasts. In the end, however, they were unable to avoid a white tiger who was protecting its young. Prior to Zhejun Yang appearing, Jin Tan Kui and the other hunters felt complete despair in their encounter with the fierce and vicious tiger. The two heavily injured hunters wanted to use their own lives to stop the tiger and give their friends and family time to run away. However, not a single person in the group wanted to abandon these two and live the rest of their lives in guilt and regret. The group summoned their courage and used every skill they had in an effort to possibly scare off the vicious beast or maybe kill it with a lucky blow. However, how could they know that this was a female tiger who had just given birth to its young? The mother tiger believed that they would hurt its child, so it went all out against them, leaving them no room for error. Their hunting forks and knives were mere toys in front of the white tiger. After fighting for half a day, other than inciting the tiger into a blood frenzied rage, they had been unable to accomplish anything else or injure the creature. As the number of wounded increased, the smell of their blood caused the tiger to become more ferocious. At the moment they were all in despair, ready to face their deaths, Zhejun Yang appeared like a black clad god from the skies. The fierce and vicious tiger was like a weak little cat in front of him. In the blink of an eye, he ended up subduing and neatly killing the animal, leaving only a corpse on the ground. Jin Tanjin managed to calm down a bit and came forward to thank their savior. However, the black-clothed man had a cold expression on his face and only glanced at him apathetically before he bent down to pick up the dead tiger. The white tiger, which had to weigh more than a few hundred catties, seemed as light as a feather in the man's arms and he easily carried the beast on his shoulders. The man carried the dead tiger on his shoulders and walked around the vicinity quickly. When he got back, his right hand was in front of his abdomen in a protective manner. The hunters that didn't know just what valuable thing he came across. On the way back to the cave, Jin Tan Kui had wanted to express his gratitude, but the black clothed man had an aloof and cold expression the entire time, making it difficult for them to get closer. It was only when they arrived at the mouth of the cave did the black clothed man finally melt his icy exterior temporarily when he saw a young maiden dressed in a pink dress. His warm smile only blossomed for one person. The gentle and doting man in front of them was like a whole other person compared to the previous icy and cold iceberg of a man. Only then was Jintan Kui able to fully express his thanks and gratitude to the whole group's savior. They were truly very fortunate today. Not only had they been able to get a good haul of game, but they also had someone save them in their moment of crisis. Furthermore, a sweetly smiling young girl, who looked as beautiful as a fairy, 
had even fervently taken out wound healing medicine made by Tongren Medicine Hall for them to treat their wounds. Jin Tan Qi had traveled to the prefectural city a few times and Tongren Medicine Hall's business was quite booming there. He had heard other people mention that their wound balm and patent medicine very quickly sold out as soon as they got new stock. This caused people to wait in front of the store for the exact moment when the supplying carts arrived. Once resupplied, these people would quickly stand in line waiting anxiously to buy the medicines produced by the Yu family. There was a reason why Tongren Medicine Hall's wound balm and patent medicine sold so well. It was said that Tongren Medicine Hall's wound balm could staunch bleeding, reduce inflammation, and speed up the healing of wounds. As for their patent medicine, you avoided losing potency as you didn't have to brew it over a stove and it worked faster. Furthermore, compared to drinking the bitter medicinal brew, Taking a pill or drinking a sweetened syrup was much more palatable to most people. When Jin Tan Qi found out that the Wan Balm was that effective, he had once wanted to buy some to bring back home. As a hunter, it was hard to avoid getting injured all of the time, so Wound Balm was an essential item back home. However, when he got to the sales counter, he found out a bottle of Wan Balm cost 50 tals. They would need to sell a lot of game in order to make enough money to buy one bottle of Wan Balm. Jin Tan Qi couldn't bear to spend that much money and finally decided to buy some ordinary Wound Balm instead. However, the young maiden in front of them was neither a relative nor a friend, yet she easily gave them a whole bottle of Tongren Medicine Hall's Wound Balm. This was a great kindness to them ah. Furthermore, there was a reason why this wound balm was so expensive because it worked very well. His nephew, who had gotten his arm bitten off by the tiger, had his suffering decrease significantly after the balm was spread on his ravaged stump. This morning, when he went to check on the younger man, the bleeding had completely stopped and there were even scabs starting to form. As for the other hunter, who had gotten a big piece of flesh ripped off his shoulder, he could walk around like nothing had happened. Uncle Jin you should all come down the mountain with us. Ah, that way, we'll be able to keep each other safe and on the right track. Yu Xiaokao had already come to an agreement with Zijun Yang to escort this group of hunters safely down the mountain. After all, this area wasn't safe. Who knew whether they would encounter another fierce beast later? Jin Tan Qi had long wanted to travel with these people but he felt embarrassed to propose the idea. After all, they had the wounded among them so their speed would be compromised traveling with them. When he saw that the young maiden had taken the initiative to give them an invitation, he was overjoyed at the unexpected good news and gratefully thanked them repeatedly. They had truly encountered a living Buddha today. From the way these people addressed each other, he could already guess that these three were absolutely extremely wealthy and powerful nobles, especially the man dressed entirely in black. He was, unexpectedly, a royal prince. However, none of these people had the arrogant and willful manner of most influential and noble people. In fact, they continuously helped them, mere commoners, without a hint of attitude. He had lived for over forty years and had never seen such esteemed nobles like them before. Jin Tan Qi didn't dare to let these nobles wait for too long, so he hurriedly had the other hunters pack up their things, load up their strings of game, support the wounded, and follow the nobles from behind at a close distance. He was afraid that they'd become impatient and regard them as an eyesore on the way back. After he had leisurely finished his simple breakfast, Zijun Yang once again put that white tiger corpse on his shoulders and also picked up a bag of fur pelts that had been skinned off of their other game in his other hand. Because they had hunted so much game, he had to skin the pelts in the mountains and the meat was left for the carnivores in the mountains to enjoy. However, even though he had a few dozen pelts on him, he only had two hands. There was still a pile of fur pelts on the ground. He glanced at Chunhua, who was behind Xiaokao, and saw that she was carrying a basket full of medicinal herbs on her back and her arms were also holding more baskets. It was clear that she couldn't hold anything more. Xiaokao's medicine box was perched on her shoulders. It held the truly valuable herbs. In her arms was the white tiger cub. Chief Steward Su ran. On the other hand, was empty-handed, which made him resemble a spoiled noble son out for a stroll in the woods. Chief Steward Su, please help with bringing the remaining two bags of fur pelts down. 
Zhe Junyang naturally wouldn't let go of this opportunity to make the other man labor. He gestured with a pout towards the fur pelts on the ground. Su Ran looked briefly at the pile of pelts that still stunk of blood and then looked down at his spotless white clothing. Then he raised an eyebrow at Zhe Junyang while revealing a helpless expression. He had misophobia ah, even if you beat him to death. He wouldn't be willing to get close to those dirty things. In addition, the high and mighty royal prince Yang in front of him looked incredibly foolish carrying game and holding fur belts. He needed to retain an image of pure elegance in front of that Lask Siakau. Thus, getting him to help, an impossibility. Only now did Jin Tan Qi notice the large pile of fur belts on the cave floor. There were sable furs, marten furs, ferret furs, red fox furs silver fox furs, and black fox furs. Ferret furs made up the majority of the furs there. Did these people catch all of the animals whose furs were worth a lot of money in these woods? Benefactor, if you don't disdain our help, we are more than willing to help you bring these down the mountains. Jin Tan Qi and the other hunters had already hidden the ordinary game they caught earlier in a small cave further down the mountain. The cave had been securely sealed with a rock. Currently, each hunter didn't have much game on them, so they were able to free up three to four people to help these nobles transport the furs. Zhe Junyang angrily glared at Su Ran and then threw the furs on the ground again. He nodded his head towards Jin Tan Qi and said, Apologies for the inconvenience. His courteous words made Jin Tan Qi feel immensely honored and he hurriedly replied, Not an inconvenience, not an inconvenience at all. Compared to you saving all of our lives. This is nothing worth mentioning. Xia Shan, Xia Omu, Xia Bao, Xia Dong, give the game in your hands to other people. Come here and help our benefactor bring their hall back. These four youngsters were all nephews from his paternal family. Thus, he had no qualms in ordering them around. The four youths had tall and strong bodies, and were in the prime of their lives. Each of them carried a giant bag of fur pelts and followed their benefactor from behind as they all headed down the mountain. Jin Tan Qi supported his injured maternal nephew as he held his red fox and sable fur that he hunted himself in his other hand. He also followed closely behind the four youngsters. Since the group of hunters were all helping their wounded descend, Zhe Jun Yang and the others deliberately chose a speed that wasn't too fast. They finally got off the mountain on the next day, at dusk. In the distance, they could faintly see the sparse houses in the nameless village in the distance. Jin Tan Qi gazed at the smoke rising from the roof of his own residence and almost had the desire to start crying. They were this close to never seeing the smoke rise above their homes again or seeing their family again. If the whole village was only left with the old, weak, women, and children, it was obvious what their fates would be. Uncle Jin, give older brother Zuzi some water ah. He's heavily injured so it's important that he avoids getting dehydrated. On the whole journey down, Yuxia Kao would always send some of her own water to the more heavily injured hunters. Although they had walked for two whole days, all of them managed to endure the journey. When she saw that the color on Wang Dazhu's face, the hunter who had gotten his arm snapped, wasn't looking too good. Yuxia Kao gave him another mouthful of diluted mystic stone water. Chapter 597, Medicine Fiend. Thank you, your royal highness. If we hadn't encountered your group, I, Wang Dezhu, would be dead in the mountains now. Wang Dezhu drank a few sips of water and felt a bit better. He gratefully expressed his thanks to the noble maiden who resembled a little immortal girl. Her highness, the royal princess, didn't have any of the arrogance of her rank and was cordial and kind to all of them. She truly had a heart of gold. When he got back, he needed to erect a long life plaque to her to make sure his descendants would remember her great kindness to them. Yuxia Kao waved a hand at him in dismissal and stated, When you get back, take good care of yourself ah. Here are two bottles of medicine. One is to be applied externally while the other you need to take. Your wounds will very quickly heal if you take them consistently. It's not a big deal to be missing an arm. There is no difficulty that can't be surmounted by people, so treasure your life. Wang Des who was so moved by her words that tears streamed down his face. Miss you absolutely had to be an immortal who had come down to earth. Not only did she give him precious medicine but she also tried to comfort him. It was hard to find such a kind and sweet maiden in this world. Master, you're finally back. 
Tuxio Liang had heard the ruckus and came out of the Jin family's residence. He was so moved that he resembled a lost young kid who had finally been reunited with his mother. He rushed over and unexpectedly gave his master a giant bear hug. Zhejun Yang pushed him away in disdain. Tuxio Liang took the dead white tiger from his master's shoulders and was so astonished that his mouth was wide open for a long time, Master. You're truly too awesome. You actually encountered a legendary white tiger. Just this fur pelt alone is enough to make other people endlessly envious of you. Go wash up and rest first, this servant will help you prepare this white tiger. Zhejun Yang was afraid that this guy might end spoiling the tiger pelt and warned him, be careful ah, uh, this is this prince's betrothal gift. If you ruin it, I will never forgive you. Master. Don't worry, this servant will be extremely careful and I will absolutely not delay your process to get a wife. Tuxio Liang glanced in the direction of Yu Xiaokao and had an ambiguous smile on his face as he hauled the dead tiger into the inner courtyard. Although Kasi was only a step behind him, she also came forward to take the medicine box from her young miss. She softly said, young miss. The stove has hot water on it. This servant will help you take a bath and change your clothes. All in all, their journey into and out of the mountains took around a dozen days in total. Although her body and skin had been subtly altered after long-term usage of the mystic stone water, such that her sweat didn't have a lot of impurities in it, Xia Kao still felt that she was about to stink to the high heavens. She had never been so eager to take a bath as she was today in her room. She scrubbed herself furiously in the tub. After she came out, she discovered that the entire Jin family had already prepared a sumptuous evening feast for their whole group. Jin Tan Qi had told the story of what had happened to old man Jin as soon as he got back. The whole Jin family was immensely grateful towards Zhejun Yang and the others for their kind deeds and almost started treating them like living Buddhas. Xiu's mother's illness had gotten better after taking two days worth of medicine. She had a good hand at cooking. In addition, the hunters in the family had brought back quite a bit of game, so they ended up with a dozen dishes on the table. As a sumptuous feast, it was quite fitting to serve to Xiaokao and their other benefactors. That adot can you take out a pill of your healing panacea for me to look at? During the meal, another youthful and pleasant-looking man suddenly appeared next to Xiaokao. He had a simpering and flattering smile on his face as he shamelessly asked her about her medications. Zhejun Yang was quite displeased that this young fellow was getting so close to his little lass, to Xiao Liang. Why is this guy still here? Why can't I still be here? It's not like this is your own home. Was a royal prince that special? As the young master of medicine King Valley. He wasn't afraid of anyone. Yuxia Kao turned her head around and saw a round face shaped like a steamed bun. It was paired with large round eyes and a small delicate mouth. From the looks of his face alone, it'd be very easy for someone to mistaken him as a little boy. However, he had a large and sturdy body, broad shoulders, and a deep voice, which contrasted sharply with his childish face. With such a baby face. It'd be hard for anyone to not doubt his abilities at medicine. It was no wonder he would paste on a mask on his face to alter his appearance. Such an adorable steamed bun face was right in front of her eyes. Xia Kao suddenly had an itching urge to pinch his cheeks. However, there was a jealous little vinegar jar right next to her, so she needed to control herself. Didn't I tell you early or ah? Uh, I only have three healing panacea that have been passed down by my family. I still regret being hot-headed at the time and taking one out to save you. These are truly life-saving pills. You're neither related to me nor a friend of mine, so how could you have the nerve to ask for one from me? Yuxia Kao knew that her special pills had mystic stone water added to them. The special water had the ability to improve the effects of medications, which was why the effects of her pills were at least double of the effects of ordinary ones. This was the first encounter Yu Xiaokao had with someone from the Jiangu. The famous leader of the Medicine King Valley sounded quite mysterious and talented, so she didn't know if she took out her pills whether the other person would sense something fishy. Hence, she needed to be more cautious. Xuzi tried to move her emotionally and persisted. Young maiden, the reason why I am able to become the direct successor of Medicine King Valley is not only because I am the grandson of the current head but also because, compared to my peers, I am extremely talented and gifted. What do your talents have to do with us? 
Zijun Yang picked up the stool that was under Xia Kao's butt and brought both person and chair closer to his side. What was this damned man trying to do by getting so close to his lass? If he needed to talk, he could just talk like a normal person. Although the youth's face looked quite youthful and tender, it was still quite good looking, which made it likely that his lass, who loved handsome appearances, had no defenses against it. Xuzi glared at him and then scooted forward again. He opened his doe-like eyes wide and looked expectantly at Xia Kao, as if he was trying to say, quickly ask me about my talents, quickly ask me. All right ah, just what sort of talents do you have? Tell us now. Yuxia Kao casually asked as she continued to eat the corn porridge in front of her. Xuzi smiled and revealed his two dimples. He proudly stated, for most ordinary medicines, all I need to do is just take a sniff and I will be able to identify the ingredients inside as well as the ratios used. For more complicated medicines, I just need to scrape a tiny bit off of the top and taste it to figure out the exact prescription. You said earlier that your family's recipe for the healing panacea has already disappeared. Don't you want to find the old recipe and benefit more people in the future? You said so much. But aren't you just coveting the little lass's family's secret recipe ah? What's the point in trying to make your intentions sound so honorable and glorious? Zijun Yang sneered and then moved the little lass closer to him. Xuzi stared at him with wide eyes and slightly frowned a bit. Then, a smile blossomed on his face as he nodded, Your Highness is right. This one is truly curious about the secret recipe to make this healing panacea. Similar to those who are obsessed about martial arts and books, I am truly a person who is obsessed about learning more about medicine. To tell you the truth, Miss Yu's family's panacea is even more effective than Medicine King Valley's life returning pill. No one would believe me if I claimed I wasn't curious about this. However, if this panacea can be researched by me, wouldn't that be advantageous to both of us? Zijun Yang had an expression full of disdain on his face and Yuxia Kao gently patted his knee before she turned to address Xuzi, young master Xu is correct, if the prescription can be brought to light again, that would benefit many people in the future. Chunhua, bring out that purple glass bottle from my medicine box and cut the pill in half and give it to young master Xu. Wait a second. This one only needs to scrape a bit of pill powder from the top. This young maiden was truly too much of a spent thrift. Such a precious pill would be hidden carefully by any other person. She, on the other hand, easily took it out to save a complete stranger and even offered to cut it in half to give to someone. This was a living saving pill ah. If she did that, the healing properties of the pill would definitely degrade as time went on. Xuzi couldn't bear to let that happen and hurriedly stopped them. Xuzi carefully held the pill as he scraped off a tiny bit of pill powder before he impatiently used his tongue to lick it up. He concentrated on tasting the pill. A. Eh? How come the ingredients he was tasting seemed no different than the ingredients found in ordinary internal injury pills are. That couldn't be right. There had to be an ingredient in there that boosted the properties of the ingredients. However, even he, as an extremely experienced pill maker, didn't know what might be boosting the potency of the ingredients. There were many ingredients that had the ability to boost the potency and effects of others. However, if you directly added them into a pill recipe, it would end up destroying the effects of the pill itself. His father had researched this painstakingly for 20 to 30 years but ended up with nothing so far. This pill had unexpectedly perfectly paired these two contradictions in one entity. If the Yu family's recipe hadn't been lost in the sands of time, perhaps his father, that crazy pill fiend, would do everything he could to get that recipe off of their hands so that he could compare it to his decades of research. That way, he could find out just where he went wrong. How is it? Doesn't taste too bad right? Yuxia Kao had finished eating the food in her bowl and delicately let out a burp. She noticed that the young master of Medicine King Valley was tasting the pill just as if he was eating a delicacy, so she couldn't help but ask him what he thought. Not too bad. Xuza replied absent-mindedly without thinking much. Suddenly, he came to a realization and looked at Xia Kao. Did your ancestors leave anything else along with these pills, such as any special ingredients? Nope. They didn't. Yuxia Kao naturally wouldn't tell him that there was mystic stone water in these pills. Otherwise, he would interrogate her on the origin of the mystic stone water, 
which would be a great bother. Xuzi looked at the pill paper in his hands that only contained the remaining pill powder and carefully folded it up. Suddenly, he raised his head and asked in a puzzled manner, you said that these pills were passed down by your ancestors. How come the potency of the pills haven't decreased even a bit? It tastes like they were just made. Do you guys have some sort of secret recipe to preserve pills or? Since it's a secret recipe, how could I easily divulge it to you? Yuxia Kao seemed to regard him with a lazy expression. In actuality, she was feeling quite insecure at this moment. These pills had truly been made by her just before she arrived at the stud farm. Thus, it wasn't surprising that the potency of these pills were still quite good. Xuzi acted as if he was possessed. He lowered his head, staying still as if he was a sculpture. Even the half-eaten bowl of food in front of him had been completely forgotten. He was currently concentrating exclusively on trying to figure out this pill's properties. He needed to figure out just how it was possible to boost the efficacy of the ingredients while having them harmonize perfectly into a pill. Originally, he believed that his father's research direction was just a waste of time and was never going to succeed. However, once a perfect example appeared before his eyes, Xuzi was now completely obsessed with this idea, even more infatuated than his father. That evening, Zhejun Yang discovered that the fellow who knew how to act cute had actually left without saying goodbye. The uncomfortable feeling within him had also dissipated a little. Why did good-looking men always seem to appear in front of his little lass, catching her attention? Chapter 598, Thief The experienced hunters in this area were all good at skinning and processing fur pelts, especially old man Jin. He was famous not only in the village but also in town for crafting the best fur pelts. Zhejun Yang and the other hunters had gotten so many furs. If they didn't handle them now, they would start to stink on the way home. Thus, they spent a few more days at the nameless village. On the return journey back to the farm, they had an additional two large carts filled full of furs. The merchants they had encountered on the road all asked them where they had gotten these furs when they saw the piles of top-notch belts. When they got back to the stud farm, Stuart Yan came over to greet his master and excitedly reported, Master. The guards have seen a white stallion leading a herd of horses in the vicinity of the farm when they are patrolling. This servant followed your orders and made sure no one went to disturb them. From time to time, we also put out some top-notch fodder in the areas they tend to appear. Those wild horses seem to be more trusting of our farm and don't always flee when we let the other horses out. There was one night when that white stallion appeared in the farm and was slyly eating Black Whirlwind's special food. Ah, ever since Xia Kao arrived at the stud farm, she had personally compounded Little Red's child's Black Whirlwind feed. Not only was the nutrition well balanced, but she also added a high concentration of mystic stone water to it. That way, the feed would alter its body. There were quite a number of horses at the farm but there were very few horses who had the bloodlines of superior quality horses. The foreign tribes only sold their mediocre and inferior horses to the great Ming dynasty. Thus, the probability of encountering a divine steed was about the same as a meat pie falling out of the sky. Therefore, they could only use the horses they had to breed better steeds. Out of all of the foals in the farm, Black Whirlwind was the best out of all of them and also the one with the most promise. Xia Kao planned on altering it and five other foals using the Mystic Stone Water. That way, they would become the hope of the stud farm. The little fellow Black Whirlwind had absolute freedom on the farm. The small courtyard residence that Xia Kao and the others lived in almost always had its gates wide open for it. In addition, Ying Chun especially liked the little horse and would always give it some rock candy that contained mystic stone water in it. Thus, the little fellow frequently didn't rest in its own stable and instead shamelessly lodged at the small courtyard. Since it had its own stable, there was no one there to fight for food. Thus, the grooms taking care of it would often add some superior fodder in its manger as a midnight snack. However, who would have expected that, for a few nights in a row? When the little fellow strolled back, it found out that its food manger was completely empty. It was quite displeased by this. Was someone secretly eating its food? Or were the humans shorting it on its midnight snack? In the middle of the night, Black Whirlwind ran over to where the grooms lodged and made a fuss. Only after it was given a midnight snack did it calm down. After the grooms had been disturbed for a few nights in the row, 
they started to wonder. At first, they thought that the little fellow was having a growth spurt and needed more food. However, even after they added more fodder to his manger, it still continued to pester them. Thus, they felt that there was something fishy about this and began to stake out the little fellow's stable at night. That's when they discovered the wild white stallion coming over to steal the little foal's food. They reported these matters to Steward Yan. After hearing Steward Yan's report, Zijun Yang surreptitiously glanced at Xiaokao, who was organizing the fur pelts at the side, and then commanded the steward, no need to do anything with that horse for now. How's the progress on the new horse stables going? The construction on the new stables is already done. After letting it air out for a few days, it'll be ready to house horses. Master, the people that you've instructed me to find to help out with raising the horses are already here. They are currently being trained by Old Jang. Old Jang was the groom who was the most experienced at raising horses in the past. He had been caught by some foreign tribes and forced to raise their horses for over 20 years. Recently, the great Ming dynasty's troops had won a series of victories and reclaimed a lot of their lost land. Thus, he was finally able to go home. When he found out that a noble from the capital was planning on establishing a horse breeding farm, he recommended himself to work there. Now, he was one of the small leaders here and had helped Steward Yan quite a bit. Make sure the new stables get cleaned. Tomorrow night, you can fill all of the feed troughs with some good quality fodder and there's no need to send anyone to keep a watch over it. Zijun Yang had heard the promise that the little lass had given to the white stallion, so he instructed his subordinates to go through with her plan. Steward Yan paused for a moment in surprise but very quickly understood what his master was trying to do, is the plan dot for the new stables to serve the wild horses? Zijun Yang nodded slightly and waved a hand in dismissal at Steward Yan. The little lass and her maid servants had already finished organizing the fur belts. Right now, the young maiden had a bit of exhaustion visible on the face. Her usually bright and lively eyes seemed a bit unfocused as if she was unconsciously relaxing. Although this was supposed to be a leisurely hunting trip, they had still been camping out in the vast wilderness and had spent over twenty-some days out in the open. Even a strong and sturdy man wouldn't be able to endure for so long, let alone a weak and delicate little maiden. These past few days had surprised him. She was the only one in their group who had no martial arts training. However, no matter where they were, whether traveling on the road or going into the mountains, she never complained about being exhausted. In terms of strength and energy, she had more than the average weak and delicate little maiden. Tired? Zijun Yang walked to Xiaokao and bent over to stroke the little lass's thinned out face. He gently said, if you're tired, go rest now. No need to make yourself endure any longer. I'm waiting for the washing water to get heated up. Yuxia Kao yawned elegantly and two sleepy tears were squeezed out of the corner of her large eyes. After being on the road for a few days, it had been difficult for her to get a restful night's sleep. Fortunately, her maid servants were all quite perceptive and quickly heated up her bailing water on the stove before helping their mistress to wash herself in the warm water. Xia Kao slept until the moon had risen high above the sky and the only reason why she woke up was that her empty stomach was complaining constantly. She ate some food that had been reheated on the stove and then dragged herself up to go to the private stall of Black Whirlwind. The round bright moon was hung high in the sky, covering the entire stud farm with its silvery glow. With Xia Kao's current eyesight, it wasn't an issue for her to see clearly as she walked on the small paths towards the stable. Behind her, she could hear light tapping sounds and she didn't even need to look back to know that the fellow, Black Whirlwind, was following her. Whenever Xia Kao was around, that little fellow liked to stick around her. Even when it was resting, it would choose a place that was closest to Xia Kao, which was right outside her personal room. Thus, as soon as Xia Kao left her room, this little fellow quickly sensed it and trailed behind her. A. Eh? Its master was heading towards the building where it lived. Did the master know that it was getting close to when it usually ate its midnight snack and wanted to add some more food? Black Whirlwind blinked its large, gentle eyes as joy surged in its heart. The food that the master made, as well as the tasty blocks of sugar were all more delicious than the food the grooms sent over. Yay! It was going to have a good snack, 
black whirlwind became immensely excited and even its steps were much lighter compared to before. Wait, why was there the smell of a strange horse in the air? Its stall was its own and it already knew the other horses that were stabled nearby. This strange horse had a strong aura about it, just where did it come from? Black Whirlwind raised its head and looked curiously over in the direction of the stables. It discovered that there was a Snow White, large horse that was currently inserting its head into its own stall and stealing food from its feed trough. The little horse immediately became furious. It had wondered why it hadn't been able to eat any midnight snacks recently. Originally, it thought that the humans in the farm had carelessly forgotten to add its snack to its stall. It had never suspected that its food was being ruthlessly stolen by another horse. Black Whirlwind felt its mind go blank and it charged forward as it wanted to warn the other horse and teach it a lesson. However, when it reached the strange thief, it discovered that its tiny build was like a tiny ant in front of the other horse. Wa 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 dot when could it grow up and beat this evil thief underneath its hooves? The white horse heard black whirlwind charging over and turned its head to glance at the little colt. An angry little foal? It barely reached the height of its legs but it was quite brave. The young horse stood in front of it angrily as if it wished it could go up and bite. This little fellow quite had guts. Once it reached adulthood, it might be able to put up a fight with it. As for now dot a tiny body and spindly legs, it had better obediently stand aside. The white stallion had no intention of harming the little fellow, it gently used its head to nudge the foal away and continued to eat the delicious feed that was in the stall. It had been a long time since it last encountered that human little girl. However, it had not been able to forget the special sugar cubes that had the ability to change its constitution that the little girl had fed it. After resisting for a long time, it brought its herd to slowly get closer to the stud farm to investigate just what the humans there were up to. When it found out that neither the patrolling guards nor the staff of the farm tried to capture or shoo them away, the head stallion brought its herd closer and closer to the farm. It hoped to encounter that little girl again. However, it was destined to be disappointed as Xiaokao had already left the farm to go into the mountains to search for rare medicinal herbs. However, it wasn't entirely without benefit. The humans at the farm seemed to know that they were there and stocked a bunch of feed near them. Within the feed provided was some food that had the same tantalizing smell as the special candy the girl gave it. The food was slightly inferior in taste to what the girl had, but it was still better than nothing. The white stallion still longed for the taste of that rock sugar candy that emitted a faint spiritual energy. It dawdled around the vicinity of the farm for a few days and discovered that on a particular young foal in the farm, there was the faint smell of the sugar candy. Later, on a particular night where the wind was blowing hard, it followed the smell to the horse stables and discovered that the feed inside was the food that it couldn't seem to forget. It couldn't resist the urge to eat everything in there. Following that, it came over every day to visit as if it was entranced and became a frequent visitor at the stud farm. Today was no exception. However, it didn't think it would be discovered by the owner of this stall, a black colored little colt had appeared. However, what did that matter? The white stallion continued to eat the food inside with large bites and glanced at the little colt with a look of disdain in its eyes. Black Whirlwind let out a furious whinny at the sight of this. Although it was still very young, it had a quite imposing manner. That damned little thief was stealing food right in front of it without a hint of shame. The other horse was truly looking down on it. Black Whirlwind opened its mouth and rushed towards the white stallion that was more than twice as tall as it. It bit down hard on the strong and sturdy stallion's leg and ground its teeth. It needed to bite this damned thief to death. The white horse, who was currently happily eating the food, only felt a light tickle on its leg followed by a bit of pain. It couldn't help but kick out that leg. Little Black Whirlwind ended up tumbling to the ground by the other horse's light kick. Although it wasn't injured at all, it was covered completely in dirt and had a huge blow to its ego. Chapter 599 Boiling Frog Syndrome Black Whirlwind pitifully ran towards its master as it whined and cried in a spoiled manner. Xia Cow stifled her desire to laugh and stuffed a rock candy into the little fellow's mouth to soothe its bruised little ego, 
the head stallion sensitively could tell that there was spiritual energy that was coming off of the sugar lump. It hurriedly raised its head and followed the smell over. Under the light of the moon, a familiar figure was dressed entirely in white and her body seemed to emit a white glow like an immortal. The white stallion wasn't able to appreciate the looks of a small human girl as its entire attention was taken up by the rock candy that the little black colt was currently chewing on in pleasure. The head stallion gracefully headed over in the direction of Xiaokao. Little black whirlwind could sense the wildness on the other horse and thought that it was going to try to harm its master, so it advanced a couple steps forward. It used its small and weak body to block Xiaokao from the older horse. It was this fellow again. The white horse lowered its head to glance at the tiny black whirlwind and its eyes were full of disdain. If it wanted to harm this human little girl, did the little foal really think it could stop it? It gently used its foreleg to push the little fellow away and stopped in front of Xiaokao. Its large mouth beelined for that familiar embroidered pouch. At this time, a black-colored little figure swiftly rushed over in an attempt to smash into the white stallion's head. The white horse backed up a step and avoided the little exploding bomb's figure. Hiss, you're not allowed to harm my master. Although Black Whirlwind had a small figure, the noise it made was both loud and trumpeting. Where is everyone? Where are the grooms? Where are the guards? Did everyone die in their sleep? There's a bad horse here bullying my master. People come here and help her. When she saw little black whirlwind making a heroic stance, trying to protect her from this intruder, Yuxia Cow didn't know whether she should laugh or feel touched by the little foal's protectiveness. She stepped forward, bent down, and gently hugged the little fellow's slightly trembling body. She stroked the foal's soft and downy fur to comfort it and smiled. Don't worry, don't be scared. It won't harm us. Although Black Whirlwind was still quite young, its intelligence was already at around a five-year-old human child's. It was able to understand the vast majority of what its master was saying. What the? The master recognizes this scoundrel of a thief that had been stealing my midnight snacks. Black Whirlwind swiveled its head around to look at Xiaokao doubtfully. However, Black Whirlwind is so brave. I'll reward you with a piece of sugar candy. Xiaokao took out a piece of rock sugar, placed it in her palm and was about to feed it to the little black foal. Suddenly, a large head butted over and a warm tongue curled around the rock candy, stealing it from her hand. The white stallion closed its eyes in pleasure as it chewed on the sugar. It also silently complained that the amount of spiritual energy within the candy seemed to be less compared to the ones the little girl gave to him before. Not enough to satisfy its craving. Black Whirlwind was infuriated by this. Not only did this interloper steal its midnight snack but it also blatantly stole its rock candy. This meant war. Black Whirlwind, whose head was filled with rage, seemed to go mad as it rushed towards the white stallion. It began to kick and bite at the other horse and was making quite a ruckus. However, that white horse seemed to disregard the little fellow, who only reached the height of its knees. It sidled a bit to avoid the foal's attack and then just let the younger horse pummel it. That little bit of strength was only a tickle to it. The most important thing was to swindle a few more pieces of candy over. Black whirlwind, there's still candy here, come back. Yuxiakao was a bit afraid that the little fellow might be stomped upon by the white stallion. She hurriedly called it back and fished out another piece of candy. She avoided the white stallion's open mouth and stuffed the rock candy into the little fellow's mouth. After chewing a bit on the sweet candy, Black Whirlwind's reason gradually came back and it cooled its temper. It glared angrily at the white stallion and raised its head arrogantly as if it was trying to say. C.R. The master still likes me the most. The white horse cast a resentful glance at Xiaokao and stretched out its mouth to snatch at Xiaokao's embroidered pouch. Xiaokao dodged it and tried to entice it. C.R. The treatment at this farm is quite good. If you decide to stay here, every day you'll get a piece of candy. How's that? Do you want to think it through? The white stallion moment really stopped its attempts to steal food and then pretended to not have heard a single word as it resumed its attacks towards her embroidered pouch. Yuxiakao noticed that it was pretending and felt a bit helpless. However, since she had already said she wanted to say, there was no need to press on. She was sure that, like a frog being gradually boiled in a pot of water, the white stallion and the other wild horses would soon be enticed and captured by the farm's benefits. 
She shoved another piece of candy into the white stallion's mouth and patted its neck as she smiled. All right, you ate some food and got a few candy pieces too. Quickly go back to where you need to go, okay? Oh right, in the future, if you encounter any storms or nasty weather, remember that there's a new set of buildings over there that can shelter you. We especially prepared that for you and your herd. There won't be any people there to bother you. Trust me, even if you come to live at the farm, you will still have plenty of freedom. However, there is one thing I need to mention. If you want to find some wives here, you need to pick first from the horses here. After successfully getting another piece of candy, the white stallion was finally satisfied and stopped its attempts at stealing more. It knew that there was a limit on how much spiritual energy it could eat in one day. If it ate too much, it would end up being harmful instead of beneficial. It reluctantly glanced at the human little girl again before it finally turned away to leave. You see a cow quietly watched as that snow white horse, who didn't have a single flaw on its body, gracefully treaded away under the gentle glow of the moon. She felt as if the horse had just come out of a storybook. It was so stunning that a person couldn't bear to take their eyes away. The cold night breeze blew past and she shivered from the drop in temperature. She shook her shoulders a bit. During the tenth month in the north, many areas already had some snow falling. The stud farm had been built in a sheltered area in the north, so it took longer for winter to arrive there. However, the evening winds were still quite cold. At this moment, a cloak that held the warmth of another had been gently placed on her shoulders and a familiar aura enveloped her from behind. She let the heat sink in and relax her. It has already left, so we should head back. As soon as Xiaokao left her room, Zijun Yang sensed it. He knew what the little lass was thinking about. In order not to startle that white stallion, he kept his aura back and followed the little lass from far behind protecting her silently. Zijun Yang had seen the little black colt bravely protecting its master and his impression of fierce wind's descendant had gone up a few notches. A young foal who dared to attack a lead stallion meant that it was very courageous and loyal, which spoke volumes about its future. The stud farm desperately needed a horse like it to become its leader. Perhaps this little fellow was destined for that position. When the grooms heard the ruckus, they once again added more fodder into the colt's stall. Yuxia Cow also added some special food for Black Whirlwind. The little black colt was so happy that it was temporarily comforted about the previous insult and joyfully ate its midnight snack. Its small tail swished back and forth excitedly, which showed just how happy it was feeling at the moment. Yuxia Cow, who had been escorted back to her small courtyard by Zijun Yang, naturally didn't know that when the white stallion left, it had stopped by the direction she had pointed in to take a look. At the outermost part of the stud farm, it saw the new large and clean stables. Each stall was filled with plenty of feed, just as the little human girl had said. There were no guards or other humans guarding the area and it knew it didn't have to worry about any traps or sinister plots. It suddenly thought of the coming long and hard winter as well as the weaker and older members in its herd. Every winter, there would always be a few members of its herd that would end up dying from the harshness of the winter climate here. That was survival of the fittest. However, as the head stallion, it also felt grief and sadness at the death of its members. If there was such a shelter like this in the past, perhaps those herd members who had died in the past might be alive today. What was more important between life and freedom? The white horse now felt a bit conflicted. Four nights after they came back from their autumn hunting, the icy cold northern wind blew around in the area for an entire night. Frosty chilliness enveloped the entire farm. In the beginning, snowflakes as bright as stars floated slowly to the ground and then the chill wind, which felt as sharp as a knife, began to rain, forcing people to cover up their extremities. You could see a cow curled up on the warm and cozy Kang bed. She had nothing to do now and decided to do her best to make an embroidered pouch so that she could exchange the extremely ugly and faded one that still hung on that fellow's, Zijun Yang's, waist. Wu Tong, who was also on the Kang bed, was currently dexterously sewing a set of clothing made out of ferret fur pets for her young miss. Winter came early to the north and they didn't prepare enough clothing to handle the cold. Thus, it was necessary for them to quickly craft some suitable clothing to help their mistress stay warm in the rapidly dropping temperatures. Out of all of the maid servants, 
Wu Tong wasn't the best at handicrafts but her skills at needlework were among the top. If she hadn't been selected by the young Miz to become a personal maid servant, it was likely that she would have been recruited into the general's residence's embroidery and sewing section. Ying Chun was currently on the Kang bed spinning some thread. She asked her mistress out of puzzlement, Young Miss, why are you telling us to spin such thick threads? What do you need to make with it are? Huh? If these thick threads were used to weave cloth, then how thick would the fabric end up becoming? Were they going to knit blankets? Chun Hua and Gushi, who were currently whittling bamboo into needles on the side, glanced at the thick bamboo needles they made. They were also quite curious about their young missus plans. Once it's all ready, you will all find out. Yuxiakao smiled mysteriously and continued to work on her embroidery. She had already finished sewing the pouch. She turned it over a few times, inspecting her work. It looked like the seams in this pouch turned out quite straight, so she was quite pleased. The hardest part, however, was to embroider a design on top. She had picked out the most simple embroidery pattern out of all of the ones Wu Tong had prepared for her, a few stalks of bamboo with leaves coming off of them. In actuality, a mischievous idea had popped up into her mind. She kind of wanted to embroider a cute and adorable cartoon figure on top. Would the cold and solemn royal prince Yang truly dare to hang such a pouch on his waist then? At this time, a gust of cold wind preceded the person who had lifted the thick door curtain to come in. A tall and sturdy figure quickly stepped in. He sat next to Xiaokao and looked at the drawing that she was currently sketching out. It was a peculiar little dog that seemed oddly adorable. Although it was merely a sketch, it was easy to tell what she was drawing. It had a small body, perked up ears, bright eyes, and there was even a scarf around its neck. From the slightly arrogant positioning, he could tell that it was somewhat related to Little White. What are you drawing? Looks pretty interesting. It was the first time that Zhejun Yang had seen something so dot abstract and cute. He couldn't help but sigh in admiration. Yuxia Kao stifled a giggle. This is the design I'm preparing to embroider on the pouch. Since you like it, I feel relieved. As soon as Zhejun Yang heard this, the expression froze on his face. He glanced at the other patterns on the paper and picked the simplest bamboo sketch and squeezed out a somewhat unnatural smile. That design looks too complicated. Just how long will you have to sew to finish? This prince doesn't want you to work so hard. How about you choose something simpler instead? Ah, chapter 600, A Sweet Bird. Yuxia cow dejectedly lowered her head and shoulders, and said in a sorrowful voice, you must have disliked my embroidery and thought that I couldn't embroider more complicated patterns, right? Absolutely not. As long as it's embroidered by you, I will like it. With that, he untied the purse from his waist and showed it to the lass who was depressed to show that he was serious. Yuxia Kao snatched the purse that was worn to the point that its edges were frazzled. She really wanted to destroy it. It must have been difficult for him not to be afraid of being laughed at carrying this ugly and deformed purse with him for two years. Then, if I embroidered little white's image onto this purse, would you wear it? As soon as Yuxia Kao looked up, her eyes, which looked like a clear sky that had been washed by rain, stared at him without blinking. Zhejun Yang nodded his head without even thinking about it, as long as it's embroidered by you. I'll always carry it on my person. I'm just afraid your eyes will become tired. He had carried such an ugly purse for two years. Although the pattern didn't match his temperament, it had to be better than the original one right? Yuxia Kao also drew a little cute yellow duck. Holding back a smile, she asked, what about an embroidered pattern like this? With sky blue brocade as the background and yellow embroidery thread as the outline, Zhejun Yang imagined himself dressed in black with such a bright purse hanging at his waist and he couldn't look directly at that image. However, what already came out his mouth had to be abided by. He nodded his head with great difficulty and said, as long as you embroider it, I will wear it. He was the grand and intimidating chief military instructor of the firearms camp, yet he was going to wear such a foolish and cute looking purse. He didn't know how much the brats would laugh at him behind his back. Going with her idea, it would be better to not change it, at least the people he knew were already used to his ugly purse. Pfffttt, Xia Kao couldn't hold it in any longer. She laughed and fell onto the Kang bed as her hands kept pounding the mat. Out of breath, 
she said, I was joking with you. These patterns are designed for pillows and satchels. How could I let you carry such a purse that contrasts with your heroic and dashing image so much? Naughty girl. Zijun Yang was completely relieved when he heard her words and let out a sigh of relief. His slender hands rubbed her black hair. He remembered what he had come for and said, the fodder in the new stables was eaten up a lot. The guards patrolling nearby saw a white horse, in the distance, bringing some wild horses to eat. They only left early this morning. Yuxiakao wasn't surprised at all. She nodded and said, it's possible that Snow Scar predicted the changes in the weather and brought the weaker horses to the horse farm to eat, hoping to enhance their resistance to the cold. Snow Scar was the name for that leader white horse that she had come up with. Compared to Little White, Little Black, and Little Glutinous Stumpling, she had made great progress. If it is as you've said, then the horses will come again. After all, the winter in the north is very long. Low temperatures and snowstorms will bring a fatal blow to the old, weak, sick, and pregnant horses in the herd. Zijun Yang was curious about this horse's high IQ. However, once he thought of his lass's abilities and those evil pets at home, he felt that this matter should have something to do with her. Zijun Yang's prediction was soon confirmed. When Xiaokao was almost finished embroidering the green bamboo pattern pouch, the horse farm ushered in the biggest snowstorm of the winter. Snowflakes the size of a baby's fist were falling from the yellow sky. The visibility outside was only a few meters. All the horses in the horse farm stayed in their stables. Even Black Whirlwind, who liked to wander and roam, returned to its warm single room. In every corner of the horse farm, fire pans were burning to keep warm. Every other day, Dr. Wang would take the veterinarian team at the horse farm and check the horses one by one to ensure that every horse could safely survive the long and cold winter season. Head steward Yan braved the wind and snow to come to report new discoveries to the master. In the master's room, he found that it was empty. He turned and went to Miss Yu's courtyard. Sure enough, he found his master there. Rest a bit. I'm not in a hurry to wear it. Don't strain your eyes. Zijun Yang enchanting phoenix eyes were looking at the knitting needle in the lass's hands. The expression on his face was so soft that water could have dripped out. Unexpectedly, the lass had this ability. Her fingers flew as they plucked the knitting needle up and down. The thing that was said to be a sweater was slowly gaining length under her skillful knitting. The lass said that she wanted to knit him a close-fitting sweater, which was warm and light in his heart. He was looking forward to it and was afraid that the lass would be tired, so he couldn't help but remind her to take more rest. It's okay, I'm free anyway. When I finish knitting it for you, I will also knit one for Sursu. This place gets cold too early. It looks like Sursu didn't bring any clothes for the cold weather. Yuxia Cow's speed in knitting the sweater didn't slow down as she talked. In her past life, to save money, her brother's and sister's sweaters and woolen pants were all knitted by her. Although she hadn't knitted for a long time and was a bit rusty, she soon got back to the old days with a bit of practice. At her speed, it wouldn't take longer than a week to knit a sweater. Looking at the blue-dyed wool under her hands, she imagined the appearance of the handsome Zijun Yang wearing it. He would definitely look very warm and handsome. What? You're gonna knit for that guy? Zijun Yang's happiness in his heart was suddenly mixed with a sour feeling. You can teach Wu Tong and Ying Chun. With the two of them knitting together, Stuart Su can also wear it sooner. He had to admit that he didn't want the last to knit clothes for others. When he thought of other people wearing the stuff she made, he wanted to take it off them. He rather destroy it than give other men any hope. You're just a big jar of vinegar. So jealous. Yuxia Kao glanced over sideways at him and chuckled. How could she not understand the thoughts going through this guy's head? I'm just worried about tiring you. Zijun Yang stubbornly insisted. I just regard Sir Su as an older brother, so why are you getting jealous over nothing? Yuxia Kao put down her knitting needle and brought over a pillow Wu Tong had sewn. She put it behind her as a cushion so she could be more comfortable. Tired? Take a break and have some pine nuts and hazelnuts. Zijun Yang put the pine nuts and hazelnuts he had peeled into the lass's hands. He took the half foot long sweater she had knitted from her hands and carefully put it to the side. When Yuxia Kao received the bounty from his hands, she ate the nuts in small bites. Outside, 
Someone reported that Stuart Yan was requesting an audience. What important matter would let Stuart Yan brave the snow and wind on this snowy evening to run back and forth to report on the affairs of the horse farm? Coming. Zijun Yang gently pinched open a hickory nut, carefully took out the kernel and put it on another plate that was on the Kang bed table. After head steward Yan came in and gave his greeting, he stood at the side, watching his master concentrate on peeling nuts. He was stunned for a moment and in his heart, he thought, could he be peeling it for Miss Yu? As soon as this idea arose in his head, he saw his master take the empty plate from Miss Yu's hands and put the peeled hickory nuts into her hands. Head steward Yan thought to himself, I didn't expect my master, who had the titles of a cold-faced calamitous star, would be just like his father, the imperial prince, someone who dotes on their wife to no end. Is there a matter? Zijun Yang saw that the lass preferred to eat the pine nuts and patiently peeled them out one by one. His movement was extremely leisurely and elegant as if he wasn't peeling pine nuts but using his fingertips to dance instead. It was very pleasing to the eye. Head steward Yan hastily took back his gaze and with a smile reported, as your highness has expected. The herd led by the white horse has moved into the new stables outside today. When the man in charge of the stable over there went to add the feed, the wild horses, although agitated, didn't attack the horse breeder nor did they seem to intend to escape. Lass, you guessed right. The white horse has come to the horse farm to seek shelter for his species. The matter was expected by both of them. However, it was going to be a process to gain the trust of the lead white horse. Yuxiakau smiled and said to head steward Yan, keep the people of the horse farm as far away from the new stables as possible. Besides sending water and feed, the horse breeders shouldn't go over there. Yes, I will tell the others now. Head steward Yan knew very well that Miss Yu's orders were the master's orders, thus, he very respectfully agreed. Wait. Yuxiaka suddenly thought of something and called back head steward Yan, who had turned around to go out. When the grooms add feed to the stables, let them take notice of whether there are any sick horses or horses about to give birth in the herd. Yes. Miss Yu was very considerate but would the wild horses allow the veterinarians access to them even if they were sick? Head steward Yan took a look in the direction of his master and left with doubts in his heart. When Zijun Yang's sweater only had the two sleeves left to sew, head steward Yan presented the statistics. The condition of the wild horse herd wasn't optimistic. There were 75 wild horses of all sizes, with more than a dozen sick or weak. There weren't many horses pregnant only around two or three. In the horse farm, the sick horses were quarantined to prevent other horses from getting infected. Fortunately, the wild horses had a warm shelter. Every day, they could eat grass laced with spiritual energy and drink from well water, so their resistance was greatly enhanced. Some of the less ill horses had begun to improve. It seems that the wind and snow outside is lighter. Ruizi, I want to go to the stables and have a look. Will you accompany me over? Yuxiakau saw that there were several seriously ill and mares about to give birth according to the statistics. She was a bit worried and used a coquettish tone to act cute with Zijun Yang. She knew that with Zijun Yang, she might be allowed to go for a walk. If she was on her own, that overbearing wife maniac would absolutely not agree. A having a man who cared too much about her was also a kind of sweet burden. Okay, I'll go with you. However, you have to put on the duck down cotton padded trousers, as well as the sheepskin vest and wear the ferret fur lined coat on the outside. Every time Zijun Yang saw the lass's thin arms and legs, he always worried about her health. 